Um, Lily, we're, we're definitely very thrilled to have you in this important discussion. Uh, I understand you have three questions for Eliza and then that you will talk to us more about your views on uh, representation in books. Over to you, please, everybody. Welcome, Lily. Okay, so I am, and thanks for that. And um, also, um, thank you, Eliza. So I am, I will ask for the three questions I've got for you in a sec. But um, first, I'm just going to do another um, introducing on myself. So my name is Lily. I am 10 years old and have cerebral palsy, autism, anxiety, offered allergies, and a few other medical conditions. I was born in 26 weeks and I have many doctors and appointments. I also have a physiotherapist, speech therapist, and occupational therapist. A purse slash OT. I like to read, play on my iPad or switch, and cuddle on the bed or on my bed or couch with my cat Paula. I am quite smart. I am good at writing stories, and I am an advanced reader. I am in the challenge program at school, which is for academic kids. I have a mother, father, and a little brother, Ethan, but he can be annoying sometimes. We have quite a few pets, including a dog, a cat, two fish, two rabbits, and a hermit, and two hermit crabs. We also sometimes foster cats. My favorite pet is our cat Paula, who is my best friend. At the moment, I am currently doing things to advocate for people with disability and other programs I've helped out with. I am also currently wearing a blue jumper. I have um light black eyes and blonde hair. My pronouns are she and her and I am speaking from Woodjack Nungar land. So my first question for you Eliza is on the back cover of um, come over to my house there is a there is wording that says in the book there are children and parents who are deaf or disabled. I'm wondering why you say deaf or disabled when deafness is still a disability. Okay, that's such a great question. Thank you so much. And what a beautiful introduction. Oh, my, no, I'm not on mute, sorry. Um, yeah, beautiful introduction, Lily. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to see you again. Um, I guess for me, it was consultation with the deaf community. So um, many people with that are deaf um, identify as having a disability, um, but they also... Um, would like to, you know, some, some, like I can never speak for, um, you know, a whole collective, but this is just what I've heard from the deaf community and um, that they prefer to be separate um, in because they feel like they are part of, um, I guess, a rich, beautiful community of people that speak a different language. So often uh, people that are deaf will use a language that's called Auslan. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Lily. Um, I guess where people will use their hands to talk. Um, and there's various different types of, um, you know, in, in England it's actually called British Sign Language. Um, in America it's called American Sign Language. In, in Australia we call it Auslan. And so because they have their own, I guess, culture, community and their own language, they like to, um, I guess, feel really proud of that and separate themselves um, from the disability community and, and, and identify themselves as being part of the deaf community. In saying that, many people that are deaf still identify also with the disability community. Thank you. Yep, thanks, uh, Eliza. Now, the second question I have is in the about the author part, you said that you write the book so that kids would be less confused when they see disabled people and for kids with disability, they would be feel less alone. You also said you have a disability. I think that if you write a book about disability or with disability, it's important to have a disability or be close to someone with a disability so you don't say things that would be offensive or incorrect so I know you kind of already said a bit about this but do you have any other thoughts on on like this sort of thing yeah um yeah I think you're just right um in that way um and I you know it's it's interesting like just to talk about something slightly different but 
um, you know, I live in a place, it's in Castle Maine, a regional um, area, just about an hour and a half from Melbourne. And there's a theatre show that's happening here. And uh, I noticed on the front cover of the newspaper, there's a wheelchair user in the theatre show. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, we've, we've got a character with that is a wheelchair user. And then I find out, no, that person doesn't have a disability. And I think that that for me is, is kind of feeds into this. For me, it's like, you know, if we're not giving those opportunities to people with disability, then that just kind of keeps pushing us um, out. And um, if we don't get those opportunities when there's a character that has a disability, I think it's even harder to get opportunities where, you know, characters don't have a disability. So for me, it's like authentic storytelling, um, authentic casting is just so important because it, um, I mean, not always, but it just means that I feel like stories will be, um, you know, better represented, you know, more authentic, more real, and I guess will then create, a, you know, a wider uh inclusion and um I think that we deserve the ability to tell our own stories as well because you know we are the best at telling our own stories and to have non-disabled people tell them for us just again just feeds into more stigma and not giving us the opportunity to share who we are so I think it's really important that we get that that opportunity last question yeah, I agree. And now for the last question, I think there might be barriers for getting books about or with disability published. Like publishers may not think there is market for it or not realise the importance of it when there are plenty of people with disability and it most likely could actually increase how many books are sold because us like um, disabled people would also want the books and um, other people may want it so they can like learn more about disability like if they've got a friend with disability or something um but what are some of the issues you had whilst trying to publish your book and would you have any advice or suggestions you'd like to give to future publishers and authors mm -hmm. um thanks Lily that's such a great question I to be honest I'm going to be really upfront and say that I was really lucky because um I guess I I had that little bit of experience when I put out my book on um, parenting with disability called We've Got This. And that was because I was um, I was first put in growing up disabled in Australia, um, my, my just my section about my story, and then grew to a new, knowing that publisher. So getting a bit of experience and then uh, pitching my parenting book to them and they were um, said yes. But I have to also be honest and say that was – the fifth person that I tried. So the fifth publisher, I had a lot of no's. I think it's important to say that like it's um, often what we see on social media or what we see uh, when we see somebody reaching heights or successes that we might want, we think that that just happened easily. Um, there's a lot of no's that constantly happen um, for me. And I think that that's just a part of it. Um, and so then, uh, the, the next part was putting out, come over to my house. And that was a lot, to be honest, a lot easier because I had my friend, Sally, who, um, was a children's author and I actually just met her through, um, she was a, liked my music and would often write to me and say, I'm listening to your, to your songs. And so I, I formed a friendship with her and she was already published. So we were just able to, to reach out to her publisher for come over to my house um, and then the book that I'm working with, Naz, you know, there's, again, lots of no's, um, but finally found a publisher that said yes. So I think what, what I would want to say is just keep trying and, um, you know, reach out to as many, make your kind of wish list of all the books that you like and all the publishers that you want to reach out to. Create, a, you know, a pitch document, a couple of pages of what you want your book to be. If you can, write your book first or have some um little parts of the book written so that you have an example of what the book will be about and uh, be able to send that to the publisher. Many publishers you'll find on their website have uh, times during the month they, that they accept um, unsolicited, um, which means, I guess, just uh, without an agent. 
uh, just you sending your um, book or your pitch documents to them and they'll list that on the website where they're open to that and just keep trying. Reach out to as many publishers as you can and hopefully you get a response.